It's not always possible to have your clients and partners working in SignAgent with you. That's why SignAgent has a suite of built-in exporting tools that allow you to create message schedules, location plan PDFs, and folders full of artwork and photos. However, there are lots of situations where you need customized information or reports arranged in a particular format. That's where the Report Builder comes in and will be the topic of this video. To access the Report Builder, click on the Organizational drop-down and select Manage Documents. You'll see a list of reports you've created for this organization. If you or someone else has already created the report you need in another org, you can import it from the My Other Organizations drop-down. If this is your first report, this space will be blank, and we can start by creating a New Document from Template. The Message Schedule Original is a great starting point, as it has the most information included from the beginning. At the top of this page, we can edit the name of this report. We'll call it Video Example. We can also use the three-lined menu button to delete or clone the report once we've finished. We're currently looking at a Document Setup tab, which lets us control the dimensions of our report. It gives us control over the type of data we're reporting on, the page formatting, and the maximum dimensions of aspects like photos or artwork. We're going to move on to the Page Body tab and come back to the header and footer in a minute. Along the top, we have a pretty standard suite of font editing options, with the addition of being able to edit the code directly using this Source button. We're going to be skipping past that for this introduction, though. The actual body of the report consists of static and dynamic text. In this example, the headers are static. They're unchanging and the first column will always say project slash state. Anything contained in curly brackets is dynamic text. As an example, this location bar will pull the title of the location it's connected with. If you recall from the document setup page, we're currently sorting signs by location, then type, then number. So below this title will be all of the signs for level one of building one. The cells below are going to contain information on the individual signs. In the first cell, we'll see the name of the project the sign is connected to, then a static arrow, followed by the state the sign is currently in. If the sign doesn't have information associated with it, such as with photos over here, that spot will simply remain blank. So let's see what this actually looks like. Moving over to the Document Preview tab, we can see what this report will look like with five signs. As you can see, we have our static titles, the location name in the location bar, and then the individual sign information. This preview is a way to get an idea of what things will look like without having to run the full report. It displays the contents, but not necessarily the exact appearance and formatting. For that, click the Download Sample PDF button. Given that we only see five signs, we don't see all of the signs in Level 1, much less Level 2 or other buildings. If you need to test what a specific sign looks like in a report, the Document Preview, much like all reports, relies on your current visibility filters. We can change what is turned on and off in the left-hand sidebar to affect what shows up in the preview. Changing your visibility settings will return you to your location plans, though, so make sure to save your work before making any adjustments. So let's head back to the body of the report. We've obviously got a lot of information that we can pull in with these curly brackets, but where do we find these shortcuts? There are two locations, and the first is through our support library. You can access the library through the support button in your account dropdown. This article is titled Report Shortcuts and lists all the default replacement shortcuts. They're broken down by general subject matter with a description of each one. It can be something as simple as a sign ID to something much more complicated, like the most recent five comments made on a sign that aren't photos. There's a lot of options in here, but if there's ever information you want that you don't see, let us know. It may be something we can incorporate in the future. Let's copy this last modified day replacement shortcut and add it to the report we're working on. I'm going to add it as another line under details. When I save and move over to the document preview, we can now see how many days it's been since this sign was last modified. The other place we can find a replacement shortcut is when editing a sign type. 
Let's move over to the C2 sign type for this organization. In the Fields tab near the bottom, there's a drop-down called Replacements. Here, you can find the replacement shortcut for each individual field in the sign, as well as some of the other ones present in the Shortcuts article that we just looked at. Please note that just because we copied this shortcut from the C2 sign type doesn't mean it will only apply to that sign type in the report. If we copy in the message field, every sign with a message field will also have that information show up. Let's add the installation instructions to our report. Coming back to the body editor for this report, we're up against an issue. I want the installation instructions to stand on their own. When it comes to adding or removing cells, the report editor works like a spreadsheet editor. I can right-click and choose an option to insert a column after this one. Let's say that I want to split up the information further. I can change the individual cell as well, which is how we got the effect of multiple headers in the cell to the left. Removing them is also very easy. All right, let's go back to briefly look at the header and footer tabs. You may have noticed on the report shortcut support page that there was a section specifically for headers and footers with a lot fewer options in it. This is because the header and footer aren't tied to a particular sign, and so dynamic text can only contain information that applies to the organization as a whole. We could put a shortcut for project in the header, but this organization has multiple projects. A sign can only be connected to one, but our system has no way to know which project name it should include in this header. This is why there's such a smaller number of shortcuts that can be placed in the header and footer. But don't worry, if you place something where it doesn't belong, the system will just ignore it. And remember, you can always include any static text you wish. So let's look at our final document. It looks ready to go to me, so let's save. Now, when going to export, I can type the name of this report into the PDF Documents area and generate this new report. And that's it. This information should cover 95% of the reports you'll need to make. But if you ever have questions or challenges, please reach out to us at support at signagent.com and we'd be happy to help.